I guess what we're going to do here first is we have the oven with us. Okay. We're going to explain to YouTube what exactly this is. Uh, we've got music that will play in the background here, just from Arpaga uh, workshop streams and everything like that. Can't use my other music. But yeah, this is Nonstop Discussion. This is the two-year celebration, actually, of Nonstop Discussion. This is episode 104. It's a talk show that we do on the channel every Friday on Twitch. And we kind of just talk about random nonsense or whatever we feel like, hence the name Nonstop Discussion. It was designed to be a kind of chill stream type of deal, but then it got a little ranty and we tried to organize the topics a little too much and now it's just a free form talk about whatever show. So here we go, we got the even. All right, so the Evan just got done with nap. Nap. Good nap. I, man, I'm having an awful time sleeping this whole week. I don't know why. I guess it's just because <laughs> around the end of my break, I was used to staying up around you know, maybe five to six writing Don't Kylo or something, and now I'm just kind of, oh, oh, now I have to go to bed at, like, 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ripperino. All right. So, actually, despite the fact that I just said the show works better as a free form, I did think there could be an interesting first topic for us here. Okay. Nostalgic games. Okay, so nostalgic over what period of time? anything that you consider to be nostalgia. Nostalgia seems to differ by, you know, people to people, actually. Alright. So, I'm going to be fucking corny and say the old group running Death Wish before One Down was a thing, that first week of One Down, that was peak fucking payday. You think that? You think so? That was peak fucking payday. That was a legitimately excellent time. Okay. Right. Um, if we want to go further back than that, Zelda Majora's Mask and the Oracle games on the Game Boys as a kid was mm. some good shit. I can, oh man, Majora's Mask was great. I think I got Majora's Mask the same the same Christmas that I got Bomberman Hero and I just had a day and a half of gaming, dude. It was so great. I had my little Star Wars toys. They had, uh, I can't, I don't think it was Lego. It was like, it was that brand of Star Wars sets though that you could get. Mm -hmm. A bunch of just uh, little models. I did, gosh, I wish I could remember what they were. Anyway, this one was like a fold-out Death Star. It was a, a Death Star thing. Then when you folded it out, it had the cantina on the inside and some other stuff from Moss Eisley. And I just remember sitting there that whole day. I just played with that Star Wars set, making up my little stories with the characters. And then I would play like an hour of Bomberman Hero. And then I would play like a couple hours of Majora's Mask. I'm a kid trying to organize my Christmas day, but I'm just getting so into Majora's Mask that I'm breaking my own rules, and I'm like, oh man, okay, well maybe like another 30 minutes or something. Okay, so I have the best story for you from when I was a kid. Okay, all right. And this is, I was legitimately well-loved. I spent my whole kid with, a my whole childhood with a love of Star Wars Lego sets. Like, that was my my thing right okay and for the longest time i wanted an atat -AT set hmm. they were those were like a hundred dollars oh. mind and uh, they were they're big but like it was like okay this will be your birthday present or christmas gift by the time my birthday gift rolled around the one that, that was being produced was no longer in circulation oh. so you could only find it on places like ebay or secondhand reseller sites my mother, like, legitimately tried her best to get this ATAT. -AT. It was not, but, like, it was, was not feasible. The price on resellers spiked up to, like, $240. Oh, and, like, geez. Yeah. So, it, it was... Sorry, this isn't happening. Come, let's say, a year later, year and a half, so, uh, like, desynced for my birthday. And, it, like, a time I'm legitimately not expecting gifts. I'm looking through... My mom pulls in the mail, and I think she looked through the Lego catalog or whatever, but because oh, some time later, like, without me saying anything, she just shows up with the newer model. Lego decided to do a motorized version of the AT-AT. -AT. Oh. It ended up being like $150, but this was like official, and this one actually walks when you flick a switch on it. 
and I was just the happiest kid. I still have it in my room. It's the greatest thing ever. That is actually pretty great. All right. Yeah. That's 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 really heartwarming for you, Evan. <laughs> What's it was wholesome. What's going on here? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey, Devastator. Let's see. Let's catch up on chat here. Rainstorm and, and Mac are kind of poking fun at me because I've usually wanted to end NSD in favor of doing something else like Slay the Spire or Ocarina of Time Randomizer or something. Yeah, NSD somehow made it two years. <laughs> when I've been semi-interested in canceling it. I guess that's some interesting trivia. Uh, Dark4 agrees with you on the Payday Golden Era that you're claiming. E. Rainstorm says, imagine liking the Oracle games. Wow, get out. All right. Well, I think the other thing nostalgic was when I discovered I was in a state that allows you to get guns easily. Come on, Rainstorm. Let's go. <laughs> no, shitposting aside, um... Oracle games, I have gotten so much mileage out of them, as in, they're fun for both casual playthroughs, the replayability inherent in them is great, they're also great for three heart runs and other challenge runs. Okay. I personally was always, I always enjoyed the world setups of the Oracle games. Now, I know I've only played up to level three of Seasons, and I never played Ages myself, but the lore and the world just always kind of inspired me. I really enjoyed them. Yeah, so, you know the whole meme of, like, you know the, like, Skyward Sword's whole meme of the overworld is a dungeon, too, <laughs> and how people were, like, pushing that for a while? In truth, Oracle of Ages really did that first. Hmm. And I'm still, to this day, torn on if this is, like, a thing, but given the way Oracle of Ages is structured as a puzzle box... That's honestly okay. Like, you go in with the correct expectations, and it's still fun. Okay. Hey, Project. Brainstorm says it was his hatred for the Oracle games that made him push for an Oracle-inspired quest. Hmm. Dark also, I will concede, Goron Dancing is the single biggest garbage that is in any Zelda game. Oracle of Ages, or the or both Oracles by extension, because you have to link to 100%. There is a... So, there is a, stor a story section where you do go around dancing, and it's not fun. It's painful, but, like, you can eek by and go, like, okay, this, this sucked, but it's done. If you want a 100%, there's four levels of Goron dancing. There's like silver, gold, oh and, God, is and there? platinum. Jeez. Yeah. Along with the mandatory one in the story. Okay. Platinum Goron dancing has a unique ring locked behind it. It's not particularly useful, if I recall, but it's like, if you want that big 100% stamp for yourself, plat yourself on the back, you have to do this. Platinum Goron dancing is harder to do than the, like, 100%ing any other Zelda game, and yes, I'm looking at you, Twilight Princess. God, that. Twilight Princess, why? <laughs> you will get all the fucking pose before you do this. <laughs> I see. Hey, Nidair. Nidair agrees it's beyond awful. Everything in the Goron Village is awful. So, I legitimately like a lot of those mini games. The bomb dodging one is excellent. The minecart one where you shoot at like crystals is a good time. The dancing. No. <laughs> Oracle games and Link's Awakening are just so different from the rest of the Zelda games. Link's Awakening, it's because it started as a passion project from the Link to the Past team, kind of like as a meme game. And then eventually they're like, hey, well, this is actually a real thing. Let's take this to the director upstairs. And they ended up liking it, so... Hmm. But yeah, Link's Awakening was designed as they've put it in their own in their were own words and in interviews as we're making a parody of Zelda. Huh. I didn't actually know that. Okay. That's why all the like surreal and just kind of goofy shit is in there. Okay. If you recall correctly, seasons had better dancing side quests than ages. Yeah. Yeah, Devastator's correct in that hate the minecart game because of how finicky the pea shooter controls are um the pea shooter controls are they're not great 
but they're also something you can like get used. Hmm. Okay. Terrible. I think they're no, okay. infinitely worse though if you're playing like on a re-release or virtual console and you don't have a like, proper four-way D-pad and have like a stick there, you're gonna have a terrible time. <laughs> I see. It's one of those kind of things you need precise directional inputs and it was very clearly designed with that in mind. Ah, uh, okay. I do want to tackle the Oracle games on this stream someday. I've put them off way too long. They are legitimately excellent. Um, the final fight with Onox is probably the best final boss in Zelda franchise. Think so, huh? Yeah. Alright. Baron is not competitive directly with Onox, but kicks the crap out of 90% of the rest of the series. Hmm. What are some other favorite final boosts from the Zelda series that you have? Demise. Demise is great. I had a lot of fun with that. Um. That was an exciting fight. Despite him being really, like, easy, and the second phase being annoying, Vati and Minish Cap was a good time. Hmm. Okay. And... <laughs> Despite the entire rest of the game being steaming dog shit, Triforce Heroes had a really good final. <laughs> Who's like, even the uh, villain in Triforce Heroes? I don't even think. It... Like this, she's literally called Lady. Oh, I and I, right. she's a she's basically just the super vain witch, and with the whole like fashionista theme going on with the whole rest of the game. Oh, but we already did Varen. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, but like. Varen has, like, ambition. Lady is just... This is a joke plot kind of villain. I but see. Okay. the fight itself is really fucking well put together. Okay. And, like, this is from... You have to suffer through the entire rest of the game to see this. So, like, I still can't recommend playing Triforce Heroes to experience this, but if for some reason you end up, do end up playing it, you'll have a good time at Okay. Yeah, I know my only real hearsay about Triforce Heroes is TS not being happy with it at all, so... So, it's it's a multiplayer game with bad netcode, like really bad netcode, that is only ostensibly playable in single player. And I say ostensibly because, like, it's not like Four Swords, which had the perfect system for managing links you're not control or four swords adventures which had the perfect system for managing links you don't have a player assigned to okay um they're basically just statues and you can kind of just click into them and move around there's a bot then there you have a boss that like you have to manage two rock cliffs and kind of like a balancing scales and you can understand how this gets stupid very quickly hmm okay because, like, you have one-third the precision, and one always has to be at the end of where you move the other and the... I see. That said, um... The final boss probably wouldn't be as good a time in single player, but it's also substantially more playable in single player, while still being tough in multiplayer because of the way it... But I guess that goes for everything. It's not going to be as good of a time in single player just because of single player's mechanics in that game. Sure, okay. All right. Not really a fault of the fight itself, just this is not a game meant for one person. <laughs> Request play it with Epi and Dark 4. I don't think any of us are going to get this game just to, <laughs> just to run through it on multiplayer, unfortunately. Not on my priority list, yeah. Uh, Dark Four is putting up a, uh, or Rainstorm and Dark Four are both kind of putting up the Twilight Princess Ganondorf discussion here. I, I, I remember hearing a lot of people did not like this fight, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, actually. I think I'm in the middle. It's a good fight, but it's not, like, one I would snap to for this is the, this is peak Zelda final boss. But I don't hate it by any means. yeah. I can understand, like, if someone thought it was a little over the top or it drags on too long, I could probably understand the argument, but 
when you're a kid going through that for the first time and all this stuff is going on around you, this this guy won't stay down. Midna's getting her backside kicked. Zelda's getting her backside kicked. She's getting possessed. You're on horsebacks. There, there's this annoying kind of shooting segment on the horseback. Maybe my least favorite part of the fight. And then you got the big epic sword showdown. And for a kid, that just that hit all the high notes for me. But completely understandable if people thought it was like drags on too long, or because it's like that is that maybe the only four phase final boss in Zelda? I can't think of another um, one. How technical do you want to be with Varen? Anything that's not a moosh boss. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Okay, so Varen has the most phase of any final boss, mm. but big asterisk because her final phase is like one health bar that oscillates between three forms. Hmm. Okay. Um, I think, oh yeah, well obviously Majora's Mask's final boss is legitimately excellent. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, a, what a meme that second phase though, man. You know they did that on purpose. <laughs> So, I think that was a really, like, in, as a kid, I was like, what the fuck is this? In hindsight, I think it's actually really well put together in yeah. showcasing, like, the insanity of the mask. <laughs> I can agree, yeah. Oh, Dark 4 has a point. Link's Awakening has the most phases. Um, mm, definitely, yeah, yeah, Nightmare okay. has the most. All right. Yeah, because you have to go through. God, I don't even remember all of them, and I know I just, I know I just played this game too, so I feel kind of bad. But yeah, all right. Because yeah, you, know, you, the... you got like Aganum, you got Moldorm, you got Gan the Man. I the think Land there's. Mola. Yeah, I was gonna. Okay, the Lamola is the one I'm forgetting. Then the little spinny arms, I guess. Right. The tail. I, I think it's one shotted in the, the 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 Game Boy version by by Boomerang, the final form. Yep. That is absolutely hilarious. So, the meme with it is the boomerang has to hit the middle pixel of his eye, and, like, it can't hit him from behind. It has to hit him straight head on for this to work. But in practice, this base, the boomerang also bonks off of his, like, the rest of his body on a miss. So, this run, it equates to just running up to him, mashing the boomerang button, fidgeting left and right a little bit as you're fishing for the spot, and he goes down. <laughs> I see. That's. <sighs> I was genuinely impressed when I'm like, okay, because on my playthrough, I'm sitting here like, okay, I, I'm going to reset if this actually works, because I don't want to end my playthrough like this, given the whole point of mine was like a challenge run. Mm -hmm. And I was genuinely impressed when I found that didn't work, but I had to try it for science. <laughs> you remember yeah, the what trivia it, coming through. So you know how the boomerang on the Switch port was like, insanely good i assume you'd you'd call it that yeah yes oh my god the, what a broken item yeah it was it was nerfed heavily it was even more busted in the game the oh, boomerang man. was basically just the flying delita rang here I, I have a picture for this i wonder why they would have done it that way it's an interesting quirk though uh, Four Swords Adventures. I wouldn't mind playing Four Swords Adventures. I actually think Dark Four was trying to set up some type of net play Four Swords Adventure thing for us here. I, I don't know when that will come through, but or when we'll be able to. Tr Evan. <laughs> <laughs> that illustrated it correctly. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> God dang it! You do this to me when you know there's no way in heck I can even post this on the screen. <laughs> You piece of crap. Well, I can post it in chat, and if viewers click on it on their own, <laughs> it, that is entirely on them. That is true. That is true. All right, Dark Four is coming through with the six forms for Deathel and Varen. Okay. Do I even want to know what this character is on the bottom left? 
a caricature of Australian shit most years on Ah, I gotcha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Australians have um, developed quite a reputation. So. I see. All right. Well, I guess that explains Illusionary, everybody. No, okay. All right. <laughs> Illusionary isn't, like, even close to rude enough to be the Aussie shit poster. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, Twilight Princess Ganondorf, definitely. I, I guess he would last... <sighs> I'm sure it lasts longer than Deathle. I don't know about Varen. But you know, when you are going back between these games, they've got different build strategies to them. Like, yeah. Not a fair comparison, but... No, I, I, feel I, like... I still give that final boss a lot of props, though. So. I think if we're going sheerly on time elapsed, Twilight Princess Ganondorf has the it takes forever on your first run, but blow, you blow through it on repeated runs issue that like, uh, not really issue, but just quirk in that the beast Ganon form either takes forever your first time because you don't really understand how he works or you, you snap through him near instantly because his mechanics are very exploitable and the way he teleports and moves is very exploitable. Yeah. Yeah, Beast Ganon was, uh, when I fought Ganondorf in Twilight Princess, it was actually a school night, and I just was like, oh, I guess we're at the end of the game now. Sure, I'll just try to beat it really quickly, and then I'll, I'll get excited and go to bed. And then Beast Ganon comes in like, hey, how about that sleep that you're hoping to get? Good. I'm just like, what in the heck is going on here? I remember I eventually figured it out, but then I was like, holy crap, dude, there's more. And then it was like, then there was even more than that after that. So I didn't get to, like, adequately explore Dark Lord Ganondorf fight. I replayed it, like, the next day or something. But yeah, I was trying to rush through it my first time just so I can go to bed. But man, I went to bed just... You're in that state where you know you're not going to fall asleep anytime soon because there's just so many things to think about in that fight. Yeah, Possessed think... possess Zelda, rather, is RNG. Uh, you can get it, I think it's seven cycles that it takes at least. Yeah. She's, um... Zelda's time tax. Um, you say sword battle is pure skill, but he's very... I don't know. Press the sword button and he will. he's designed to give you openings. It's all skill. Oh, Jamesy. I did. I heard sword battle. I'm like, that's all skill. You're yeah. in a Twilight Princess Ganondorf fight. Ping pong? Ping pong. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, part of it. That is that is definitely all skill. You know, the speedrunners can knock that phase out in like, what is it, 10 seconds even? Yeah, he's he goes down quick. He did. He, well, he does like a way weaker version of the Dark Nut blocking routine. Hmm. And the Dark Nut blocking routine is legitimately annoying to get around if you're uninitiated, but Ganondorf's is, like, delayed, so you can kind of just mash a couple attacks and you will eventually cut. Okay. He'll, like, block, block, hit, block, block, hit, and obviously when you know the most efficient ways to get by it, you can just speedrunner dab on him, but... Yeah. Man, speaking of Dark yeah. Nuts, what a great enemy. Who? That Temple of Time mini boss. Oh, so good. What a great introduction. I haven't played that one in a while. I have to go back and play it. Okay, hey. so since my quest project for the six quest content uh, contest, it probably isn't happening. Let uh -huh. me get you the video I made of two of the enemies. All right. We'll get some bonus footage here, everybody, and then maybe I can finally change this darn song. I always forget to change this song when I do this. I, okay, so I very much tried to fight them in these videos the way I expect an average player's would, would, and didn't actually, like, utilize spacing until, oh god, I'm being pressed on the mm -hmm. dark map. I tried to give an imp the impression or accurate simulation of what this would look like for a first-time player, and, um, I'm kind of a dick. <laughs> kind right. of? Not the man who made Isle of Rebirth and Umbral Cloud and every other mega boss in ZC history here. All God right, damn it, Brett. Hang on.
Let's open up this, uh... Alright, here we go, everybody. What is this? What? Huh. Oh! God dang it, that's oh. loud. Son of a biscuit. That bounce! I see. That's interesting, okay. Which one are you watching? The Suffering Wizards. <laughs> oh, I see. You, this one got eaten by Discord and somehow showed up second. Okay, I got you. Okay, now we'll go to Peak Darknet Performance. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about these. Oh. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> oh, that's mean. <laughs> So, they're very much designed to mash you if you try and approach them like regular Zelda 1 Dark Nuts. The same way Zelda 1 Dark Nuts are, are designed to mash you if you approach them like regular enemies. And the Wiz Robes are just designed to mash you. This is an Evan enemy, everybody. If I've ever seen oh. one, it's, it's right here. Why do you hate everyone, Evan? It, it, Blue whiz robes extract suffering from people who play the games, which makes me young again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this your fountain of youth? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, it's not really in indicated here, but if you have multiple blue whiz robes on the screen, as in you cannot sanely place more than two in, like, a regular situation, mm -hmm. um, they actively work together to box you in. Okay. Yeah, we can see the whiz robes again. That was a little short. Yeah, you were telling me you don't, you absolutely don't want to put too many of these on a screen. You thought like three and one was too much, or? Yeah. But I found creative ways to air quotes nerf them without the player really realize what's going on with the room formation itself. Hmm. Since they have hard rules about when they can do their meme dash based on terrain solidity. And if vanilla whiz robes do too, it's just. It's they're designed in Zelda 1 to be peak of effectiveness. And in ZC, often not, which is why they feel very derp in ZC oftentimes. Okay, all right. There are some inaccuracies between Z1 with robes and Z Zelda Classic vanilla with robes, in that Zelda 1 with robes are more aggressive. But don't worry, I think <laughs> You fixed it. Well, look at how aggressive this blue is. Yeah. Blue is, uh, he's angry. It's so angry. You still Why is it so angry? Still gonna finish Queast at some point, or are you just gonna put it down? Oh. Sunk cost fallacy has kicked in. I'll mm. probably finish it at some point. Okay, well, that's good at least. Just give them 255 tracking and enemy editor. God dang it. <laughs> These aren't Toucan Sam. Well, that's a bit rainstorm. Wizards, because of the way they work, can't actually use the, just a single value for tracking. In fact, I rewrote these ones to basically use inputs in various fields in the enemy editor. There's three numbers that control how aggressive there are. they are. Hmm. Hey, Neo Silver, how you doing today? Got any other gems you want to show off? Also, um, hmm. Evan has to dive into the vault and figure out what's goobin enough to. Yeah, this is, uh. I've shown you this already, but I haven't shown your entire channel. Alright. Oh! <laughs> Alright. So what isn't shown here is any fire that you create that touches him. If your arrows touch through fire, they become fire arrows. Hmm. That's nifty. So like his whole mechanic is designed to limit your opportunities of attack. 
and try and bait you into doing dumb things. Basically, if you get impatient on this fight, you have the worst time. If you keep your cool, pun intended, he's not that bad. Okay. So because of the fire this, arrows just don't hurt him then? Uh, he actually heals from them. Oh, okay. As in, you will make negative progress if you just wildly spam arrows. So, I very much expect this boss to be the new friend Slayer for first-time players if they're just impatient. This, because this is like, all the bosses to a degree require you to sit down and actually understand how they work to win, either through them being cycle-based, but this one like, rewinds progress if you don't get it, so. Hmm, okay. And by definition, all of the bosses in this quest are untankable. You do tend to like to do that. I'm finding more and more creative ways to do that than just make them hit you hard. Well, but good news. Like having having you just sit on top of a boss fat figuring sword until they disappear is not interesting or fun for anyone. But Evan, my five thousand headed fire gliok with with <laughs> Nehru's love and, and other garbage like potions and, and yeah, okay. But Din's fire. Is I Evan like finally fire. growing out of lasers? Um, no. How do you, you <laughs> lasers how does are, one grow out of lasers? Lasers are the shit. Lasers are legitimately excellent. That said, lasers the H, lasers are lacking in the presentation department. When you laser so much that the laser script is no longer enough to laser. Fair enough, though. So I saw that your level three looks pretty, uh, pretty darn linear there. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Although it reminds me of the shape of something. I think it's a, let, a let Z1, Z1 Quest Two map or something. It it sure does. All right. Let me get this for you. All right. You remember how in IOR Frozen Enclave had like the middle upper floor? You'd go up into it. It was like want to talk elevated about above the Enclave. No. Okay. <laughs> So, we have a similar idea here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's fair then. It just doesn't show up on the map. Alright, gotcha. Yeah, the lower floor is... <laughs> I see we went... <laughs> what? We, w we went on the great red-blue adventure over in this corner, everybody. <laughs> So, that's one of the first rooms guys, in the dungeon you used. This, this all and just looks evil. It's one of those rooms you go through a lot, but it doesn't actually, like, ask that much of you. It's just a very elaborate-looking combination lock of how you progress through the dungeon. Okay. Oh, good night, Nidair. We'll see you later. Uh, yeah, Dark4, Evan said that he's, he's sunken cause fallacy. He's hoping to finish the quest anyway. Not in time. Maybe at some point. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's understandable. You should have taken the dungeons, Evan. You could have I, had the dungeon. Oh, okay. I joked on Pure when someone asked, is this going to get done? Also, when's the inverse mirror? I jokingly said, how about I cancel them both together and then Fortnite dance off in the book? <laughs> okay. Everybody ban Evan now. Okay, <laughs> okay then. So, the transition effect between floors for this dungeon was obnoxious, to say the least. Yeah, how's that? Um, tile work. Custom tiles. Oh no, you went down the rabbit hole, huh? Uh, everything in this quest has required custom tiles to at least an extent. I think I'm starting to see why you didn't finish in time. <laughs> No, that's okay, though. Um, I feel like I legitimately could have. I don't think it was a ambition or scope issue, but being hospitalized in the middle of it, uh, 
did a lot to my ability to finish. Yeah, that's fair. Also, um, here, let me post this. It's not nicely labeled. Okay. And this is also part of it. Oh, Discord does this weird. Oh, there we go. Okay. What was this? This wasn't five. This was... Five. This is five, okay. Yeah. Okay. We talked about Pink Dungeon a lot, and I figured you'd want to see this. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I've seen the finished version yet. I love... I love the middle segment. Yee. That is fantastic. I don't know how much of this you want me revealing to... Yeah, go for it. All right, okay. Seeing Man. a map of this isn't going to make isn't going to make this place hurt people's heads any, <laughs> any less. Okay. Does look nice, Evan? God, <laughs> <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> so the thing with this dungeon is when you play music or step on one of those colored tiles, a musical note comes out relative to that point on the harmonic scale and you push the blocks next to the things and press the buttons relative mm -hmm. to the note on the block. And I was having fun with that. <laughs> okay. That just looks like a nightmare and I have no idea how to read this map thing, so yeah. There is a secret room that actually shows you in this dungeon. You can find it as soon as you enter the dungeon. Hmm. That it shows you what color corresponds to what. It's on the pink half. So are you over here solving the the heck is that thing called? You're killing the time devourer over here, Evan? Yes. Alright. Yeah, I do like the presentation of the tiles, though. I still think the starry bits are my favorite. I know we talked about those several times over. Yes. I made it a point to use the stars in the dungeon whenever applicable, because that was the best part of the overworld leading up to the Okay. Also, um, the boss key room is really funny. Oh, yeah? Where should I go for that? Um, pink, upper left corner, first floor. What's considered the first floor here? Uh, the biggest. All right. Okay, the so part. you have to play a certain musical tone to get said chest or what? Yes. You Ooh, walk nice. in. Okay, so you walk in. You have Requiem of Spirit played for you. Oh. And then the floor, you were just shut in, and you either play it back, or if you make a mistake, um, three blue wiz robes and two red spawn in that room. <laughs> Does that happen every time you mess up? No, you, you survive that and the puzzle solves. But um, that's oh. a big if, given what you saw from those wiz robes. Why, why do you hate people? <laughs> God dang it, Evan. Fuck the tone deaf. Oh, wow, that's just wow. that's just that's just evil for the for just wanting to be evil. Jesus, Kate says one of the one of her favorite things about these discussions is how excited we sound about the projects. I on, that's why I do like talking about the card game stuff on here. Is even though very few people are able to respond and everything, I just like getting out the ideas and talking about them. I'm excited because I don't know anything about said projects. So all right, there you go. Okay, so here's the fun gimmick between the two halves. Every time you pass through, you flip the hourglass over. Red, blue blocks flip, save. Hmm, okay. And given that, like, you can only flip from the left or right side of the central point, as you can see from the far right of the maps, see, so you have to manage which side are you on and the state of the red, blue blocks. This dungeon is... Oh, has a lot going on for how compact. Hey, you did it, Evan. <laughs> you did Dojon gimmick without needing 150 rooms. Well, it also took two maps, but that was for my own sanity of making sure the rooms all lined up. No, that's fair. That's an organizational thing. I don't think anyone can fault you for that. Wait, hang on. I'm missing something here. Yeah, Discord did that. Oh, God dang it. All right. Okay, now I'm now I see why I'm like missing stuff. Okay. Because there were two maps, and I didn't notice. I say compact, but Rainstorm, this is functionally an IOR dungeon. 
Bag. Bag. Yeah, <laughs> okay. so bag is the introduction to the mechanic or like testing if you understand it. Okay, that explains why I couldn't really find an entrance on the other one. You start on the pink, the, the brighter pink. Okay. Yes. See, they both kind of look pink to me, so when you kept saying pink, I was like, okay, what about pink? But I get it now. Okay. The team UDF and his uh, slight color disorientation, everybody. But team, the truth is pink doesn't exist and there's no pink wave blank. It's just an illusion of our eyes perceiving Shut between up, the purple and red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even letting. I'm not even entertaining the end of this. <laughs> uh, Evan's breaking your minds open. The, even all your hiding heart pieces. Yep. Every I dungeon has heart one heart piece. piece. That's fair enough. Got a piece of how to everybody. I didn't. I honestly didn't know where to put it in this one, and I also didn't know what to do with that room, so it kind of worked out. So am I at three fourths of a heart piece or one? Then. Uh. Well. Depends on how oh. much of your soul I've ripped out over the years. Twilight Princess Ganondorf only hit you once, so only three more. That. <laughs> that means you owe me point two percent now. Okay. But I need that to live. Never. <laughs> Looks like a nice the dungeon, other, though. The other thing I utilized a lot with this was strategic use of bubbles. Oh, yeah. To make okay, so to make like the first time you go through a, se a section, just oh god, why? But because of the way the bubbles are ordered on the enemy list, unless you leave the dungeon, it's not going to respawn every time you come through. Hmm. You do that intentionally, huh? Yep. Okay. Well, this dungeon, I want a lot of the fight rooms to be like, "Welcome to Wizardrobe Hell," but you don't have to do it all repeatedly. And once you get past the point of like the initial exploration, please go away, Riz Robes, I don't want to see you. I want it to be more about understanding the dungeon itself until very key sections, like, before major items and stuff. I, I like the aesthetic of these sections where it kind of looks like you're walking near the ceiling. Yes. It's a good little, good little artistic thing there. The Is elevated the bits. The I like place you have that, or do you have that other? In this dungeon, yeah. Okay. Oh, you did it elsewhere there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That can be kind of like your your quest gimmick or whatever. I've yeah I've I been so. playing a lot with elevation in classic, in addition to freeform rooms. I find it makes it feel more like an air quotes real tile. Okay. And yeah. then, like. Yeah, Rainstorm has pointed out several times how he likes the tile set, but is missing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, the problem with the tile set, in my opinion, is it doesn't have room for combos, which makes jamming combos in for scripts up an adventure. That is fair. I, I think Rainstorm would agree. So, I think the cutest thing in this entire dungeon, to the right of the dab room, there's a ton of note blocks. And only, like, some of them, when you blow your whistle near them, light up. Oh. And th this sounds, like, really fucking tedious and annoying, and you don't have to actually do all of them. If you blow on enough of them, you'll eventually see a diagonal down-facing arrow pointing to where that vulnerable wall is. <laughs> I think it's adorable. Oh, you. Can you see that? one to ten, how adorable. Can you see that room from another angle so that you're at least aware that it exists? Yeah. Okay. You come through it from the south of the bomble wall thing first. Cool. And you outright see the crack there. But, um. Oh, you have you... that. You have that bottom crack visible. Yeah. Okay, cool. Eh. Sorry. Shut up. You Jay. probably, <laughs> um. You probably won't see that. Or, like, won't remember that all the way through. I In the previous dungeon, I had done some, hey, remember this, things with bombable walls. Which I do expect you to remember, like, you're on the other side of this now. You have the map. It's your job to figure this out. But that's, that's not the focus I wanted. Okay. So like, I was going to say... too much work to make me figure it out, bro. I need it simplified. I do think Link's Awakening did this at some points as well. I th I've heard the Switch port was better about this. 
I don't feel the original Link's Awakening's implementation of it was particularly bad. I think the only thing in the original that I genuinely had a problem with was the lack of, like, conveyance of, I throw a pot at this door to make it open. They just had the same graphics as regular doors. Right, and okay, people were mentioning that, yeah. That was, like, legit. I think that's legitimately the only, one of the only problems I had with the original Link's Awakening dungeon design. Okay. Even the, um... Even the one in Face Shrine where you throw a pot at the chest, it literally just tells you to throw a pot at the chest. And, like, okay, fine. Oh, the boss it's, key, it's yeah, yeah. Or the nightmare it, key, it's rather. It's goofy, but whatever. The doors for the pots persist for quite a while, if I recall, throughout the game, past the castle where they start being introduced. So you're not, like, necessarily sure in more complex dungeons like Face Shrine. Is this something I need to come around from the other side for? Is it a one-way? Or, oh, no, I just throw this elephant at the, pot, at the door, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did appreciate those being marked. It took me a while to figure out what I was actually looking at, but then it was like, okay, now you've seen it once, now you know to do it every single time. Yeah. Oh, I would still forget. I believe you. I don't Zelda a lot anymore. Oh, no. What was the last one? You, did you play Breath of the Wild? Yeah, I got... I got uh, oh, actually, hold on. I can... Ah, shit. I fucked that up. Okay, hold on. All right, he's he's got his stuff. He can just check. No, I can't because I forgot it. I have the actual cartridge for it, and I don't. And that's packed away, so no ah. yet. All right, fair enough. Yeah. But you just you I didn't think, finish it. Point being, yeah. I have like yeah, I have like sixteen hours in it. I think. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I got to the part where I had to go all across Hyrule Field in the middle, and I got wrecked by everything, and I'm like. <laughs> That's fair enough. It definitely is the most difficult Zelda game in just ages, dude. Holy flid. I, mean, At least I enjoyed it for what I could actually get past, but yeah. Yeah. It's on the to-do list. <laughs> I'm still on three hearts on my second run through. I, I re-got it for the Switch so I could just replay it, but uh, yeah, I've been at three hearts the whole time and I'm just now finally worming my way around to Kakariko after doing a bunch of stuff. Hey. So... The other thing I'm really happy with with this dungeon is the key progression. You know how a lot of dungeons are just like, get three keys, get dungeon item, use dungeon item, get three more keys, get boss key, end? That kind Man. of deal, generally. Especially in ZC, the pattern that I hate are those key door circuits where you open like three or four locked doors at a time. Mm -hmm. I... I can understand the premise behind hiding a bunch of keys in a labyrinth and you go and find them, but those always just come off so silly to me. I think the problem with those in their implementation is you're not being able to see how many you need ahead of time. So it just feels like, oh, I'm one short. Okay, well, back we go. Yeah, like Key that's... Cavern and Link's Awakening tried to fix this by showing you every conceivable angle of that room. You can see every lock block, I believe. Yep. But people in ZC are not as experienced with game design, and so they're just kind of like, oh, here's a giant circuit. You you were looking around this dungeon for maybe an hour or so. Oh, but you're still missing a key. LOL, have fun, go back and check again, you pleb. The people who put the locked door at the very end of the big circuit, re <laughs> Especially when it doesn't need to be there, like... Ostensibly, there's some things that, like, okay, this has to be by the dungeon item check, otherwise you could break this and do it early. Mm -hmm. But there's some some cases of this I see in DC where just there is no reason this needs to be this far ahead of all the other relevant checks. So, like, if, it's, if you're coming up short, turn me back early. Yeah. In this regard, I very much enjoyed how A Link to the Past implemented the big key, where it almost kind of unlocks the second part of the dungeon. Mm hmm I, very good use of the big key. It's sometimes just, you know, the boss door or whatever, but other than that, other times it's, here you go, here's your keyway to the other part of the dungeon. And I especially think using it as the big chest key at the same time really helped its usefulness. I always saw as a, as a sigh of relief, like, oh my god, yes, I finally got this. Now I can actually <laughs> yeah. get going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because so I, I would always find the freaking boss door key before I found the key, so I'm like, oh, all right. Oh, okay. That's like, fair enough. Like, I know where that's at. Hello. 
Yeah, and I do think that was done on purpose so that you could remember, like, oh, now I can go through that door that I saw. But yeah, one other Zelda game that I thought did this to a degree, not necessarily with keys, but with dungeon items, was Skyward Sword. I'm, I'm going on record, uh, Skyward Sword is my favorite Zelda. You like that one a lot? Record, so okay. I, I freaking love that one. I don't know why, I just do. Okay. I got into it. I've got ones that I like better, but I got into it. I can I, I can appreciate. I got into its dungeons immensely. They Shame had some really the fun dungeons. They had some fun ones. Let me go back I, and replay it. Skyward Sword had... I want to say, like, pound for pound, Skyward Sword had the highest quality dungeon average of this. I just didn't like that the overall map was really small. I had a lot of problems with basically every other facet of the game. But the dungeons were beyond that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, the setup of the dungeons in such a way that you're like, you go in, you do something that's kind of small, you do a short circuit or whatever, bam, dungeon item right away. Kind of like, almost jarring at first, but then the rest of the dungeon's a playground for the item. I really like that yeah. setup. It was and dope. That was taken to its logical extreme in Link Between Worlds, where you just kind of, you come in with the dungeon item. <laughs> yeah. Which, I, for better I, or worse. I love Link Between Worlds. That's a Link fair, Between yeah. Worlds, I love it. I have some problems with it. it might be my, my number one and number two, one actually. Favorite. Twilight Princess would be a third. Hmm, fair also, thing. on good final bosses, Link Between Worlds is up there. Oh yeah, that one was fun as shit. Dark Fort likes Skyward Sword, but Fee spoils it for him. I'm calling her Fee, everybody. I do not give a crap about this pronunciation. It's Fee to me. I Fee is, um... Fee sucks. <laughs> but she did not kill the whole game for me. Yeah, agreeable. There are some parts about the story being that she's supposed to be like the essence of the Master Sword or whatever. There's some things that I kind of call BS on here, but I don't know. Also, can we talk about how Girahim manages to pull off this, the worst part of Fallout 4? In that there is clearly a point where he has won and just kind of chooses not to win. Yeah, I, he, he freaked me the fuck out. I absolutely hate villains that do this. Where he just patiently waits for you to go get the song to come fight him. Yeah. Before he does his ritual. And not even that. I think there was like a cutscene where he just, he had everybody at his mercy and just chooses to leave or something. I don't remember what happened. I just remember being really aggravated. It's like, that's the number one way to get me to think that your villain's an idiot. So, counterpoint on that. Fee couldn't do anything of her own agency, yeah? Hmm. Like, That'd otherwise, be. you would. Why, why would Link be there? If Gearhim's a counterpart to that, maybe he actually can't without being instructed by Demise. And that since you were, like, you weren't directly part of the instructions, he, like, had a very limited set of what he could actually do. But that is something like that if they that's what they wanted to go with is poor conveyance in the storytelling not yeah. like something you should be expected to figure out that is not shown anywhere for sure i don't know his presence throughout the game kind of works for me he doesn't just sit in the shadows he does things i the repetition of boss battles in skyward sword kind of sucks but uh other than it that, was a lot of fun though <laughs> him calling out uh, what the heck's that thing called? Coloctos? Oh, what a yes. boss. Maybe maybe top three bosses in the entire series for me, Coloctos. I'd easily give it top five. I don't know about top three, but easily top five. What a great fight. Yes. Uh, Dark Four ha adamantly hates hand-holding. That's fair, honestly. What I think would be nice for these types of games where you have the companion is if you could just shut it off or turn it on. Like, there's points where Fee needs to be a character, 
But all those other times that she's being a tutorial instead of a character, if you could just tell the game to screw off on all that, I don't think there'd be an issue with it at all. If they didn't start with Ocarina of Time, I don't think they're going to start now. <laughs> just saying. Now, hey, James, listen. No, you <laughs> listen. Gosh. Uh, good times. You go die die missile. Uh, I said that to one of my coworkers the other day. They're like, "What the fuck is that?" I'm like, "Dude, you played Go Texan Fighters. How do you not know Die Die Missile?" Wow. Like, what is wrong with you? What's DBZ doing now? Anyway, are we waiting for another like sequel to Super? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, I, I think we're waiting for the manga to get a little bit ahead before they start animating it. Oh, Fucking they've hard. already they've already done something. Okay. Oh, yeah, now we got a fucking space wizard who fucking devours planets. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get my team. And literal, well, and literally life energy itself, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, though, what? <laughs> Light of Galactus? Yeah, he's kind of like Galactus. Oh, he's like Galactus, okay. Yeah, so he, like, absorbs energy and shit. Huh, okay. So, like, Vegeta was wrecking him, and then he ended up, you know, pulling an android and ended up absorbing shit and ended up wrecking him instead. Ah. It's kind of, it was kind of shit, but, I mean, dude was in prison and for, like, oh, I forgot how long, but it's fucking forever, so. But it's all good, because it got us Vegeta's best fucking training arc, so, yeah. Hmm. He pretty much trained on Yardrat and shit, so. Now he can just, he's going to do cooler shit than Goku, hopefully. Yeah, Vegeta needs himself a big win here. Like, yeah, because pretty much um, one of the dude's henchmen, like, came and was gonna kill him, so Vegeta just did, like, a regular, like, energy blast that he's used to doing, and it's he's, like, taken aback by, like, how much stronger he is, because it's, like, a big old ball of kaboom. <laughs> so, I have a comment to make like, about Super uh, in this regard. Go is, for it. Or, or a question, rather. Is there really a reason that Vegeta couldn't beat Golden Frieza? So, like, most times that a DBZ hero loses, it's because they're stalling too much, or because they're too prideful, or because they make a mistake. But I don't think Vegeta made any of those mistakes in this Golden Frieza fight. Frieza's he, he made the mistake of uh, Toriyama hating Vegeta. I guess. I don't know, man. It's just but like... he didn't really make any besides taking too long. Because he had that Big Bang ready to go and shit, so... Yeah, like, Freeze is just a cheating heel, which is fine, but... I... Why did this have to come at Vegeta's expense again? I know, that's what everyone's so pissed about. <laughs> okay, they're still... Alright, okay. It just feels no, like I... Vegeta's way overdue for a big win here. Does he have a big win yet? Did I miss one somewhere in here? No, he has no big wins. Oh, man. His big wins... His big wins get overshadowed by the fact that the baddie just, like fucks him essentially i see like because there's like that whole goku black shit when he was beating the crap out of black and all that so that was nice but yeah it was better in the manga because vegeta was the first one to do uh super saiyan god and super saiyan blue all that switching shit that goku did in the tournament of power that they did really really bad so yeah his big win was bulma <laughs> I mean, to be fair, have you seen Bulma? Actually, technically, his big win would be in the anime would be uh, his fight against Top, since he's technically a god of destruction when he beats him and all that. Oh yeah, Top is one of those, isn't he? Okay. Yeah. I mean, granted, it's, it's a candidate, but still, it's technically classified as a god of destruction. So. I see. Okay. Yeah, but other than that, like, nah. Okay. I do have to admit, I have not seen a lot of Super. I've seen, like, a lot of the big scenes, though. I mean, the Tournament of Power is fun. It's just big fun, but it gets kind of stupid towards the end, but, I mean... They just make everything I... too OP, or...? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, right. They scale it a Plus, little Plus, Gohan much. doesn't really get a big moment in it. Is Tournament oh. of Power the end of Super? Uh, for the anime. Yeah, I until mean... the until they decide that they're going to start animating it again. I mean, me I really enjoyed the Bowling movie, but that's just me. Let me tell you about this stat block on legs, Jiren. <laughs> Jiren skips leg day. <laughs> he sure does. Now, I actually, like... Jiren is Brock Lesnar, let's be honest here. 
I kind of, I don't know, I just like Jiren. I don't know, I really liked him in the, how they did him in the English dub because, I mean, Dio, so, I mean. I think he was way better in English because of the Dio relation, but yeah. I feel like as a Dragon Ball villain, he was yeah, on just, the weaker it end. It wasn't, it was just supposed to be an antagonist. He wasn't really supposed to be like the villain villain. It's just villain? like. Well, the build up behind him. He's the last thing for them to fight, and I guess you could say, given the shit he tries at the end of the fight, that is definitely villain behavior. Yeah, I mean, if it, I mean, by that time he's just so pissed off he doesn't care anymore. Yeah. Dude, it's Rainstorm, like... I love that Broly movie so much. What a great freaking film. The new one? Yeah. I literally like someone uploaded it like 1080, whatever, on YouTube the other day, and I watched it because I'm like, you know what? I, I, I've only seen it once. And I watched it, I'm like, God, this is actually really good. That was how I saw it. I was blown away at how, like, it, it was night and day with some of these other old school DBZ movies and this Broly I'm, movie. I'm just saying the part when Vegeta went Super Saiyan God. <laughs> so, shot. I know shot. very, <laughs> I know very little about DBZ's new movies and so on. I do know that someone from my uh, Blaze Blue fighting group said I am Broly IRL in this game with full anime power, and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I assume a good thing. Broly He's just gonna get stronger as you play him. Yeah, he is. He is much better. I just, now, I, just I just, I just, I just don't like that fact. You're training with Paragus for like 40 years, like you shouldn't be that strong. But whatever. Well, yeah, I don't know. OG Broly just dumpstered people. Dude, new Broly. It's way worse just for the fact of how the power scaling is now. Good. Like, you're going from base and you're taking on Super Saiyan God. Like, get out of here. Yeah, he is base taking on Super Saiyan God Goku, and he I really can't. only... I hate it. They they still just consider that one transformation that he makes, right? Like, he doesn't jump several levels. He just It's just his one transformation. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that they explained, like, one of his power boosts as, like, he has, like, the Ozaru power, but he just doesn't transform. That's I fair, love yeah. that. I love that, but it's just like, come on, that's just, he should not be going toe to toe with blues and gods and shit. Like, come <laughs> and, on, that's and, just too much. And really, like, Gogeta didn't immediately win. <laughs> no, it's just super regular Super Saiyan. Unless there's electric, you can't tell if there's electricity around him in that because there's so much happening. That is true. Man, that segment where they do like, they do that first person sweep with the camera and you're going through oh, the fight. Holy I flip. Thought was, I thought that was cool as shit. Like, Top moment of the entire thing. I thought it was cool. Plus, I, li I liked uh, Goku's Rasengan getting bitch smacked, so that was nice. <laughs> Broly goo. Get out of here, Dark Four. I never want to hear that movie ever again. But no, like, I would have been perfectly fine if they would have been like, oh, when he goes Super Saiyan, then he can match up to Blue and all that shit. Like, I would have been okay with that, but just the fact, like, hey, here's this hmm. weird BS power up. Yeah, Frieza for yeah. best comedic moment in that movie by far. Frieza in general was just great. When he fakes the Paragus kill. Yeah, fakes the Paragus kill. His stupid wish to become taller, but not so tall that people notice it. Like, I I loved Four how... centimeters. I loved how goofy the wishes were. It's just, how could you possibly take this seriously? But it's so good. Yeah, like, I, I, I hate Frieza. Like, I want him to just go away. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't like him as a character anymore? I, ha I hate Frieza. That's fair. All right. So, well, no, because I wanted Majibu in that fucking tournament of power arc, and oh. I didn't get Majibu in the fucking tournament arc again. I got you. Okay. He was sleeping in the last one, and he was sleeping in this one. You know what the biggest, like, missed potential for a Dragon Ball villain would be? Villain that completely just kills the heroes. And then wishes to bring them back so he can kill them again, but then that doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Would that not be amazing? It would fit the series. I mean, pride <laughs> is a running gimmick and people losing these like, fights. Yeah, it's legitimately, this is missed potential. Well, no, it's like the fact it's like trying to find a freaking villain that could even do that with how strong characters are nowadays. Ultra Instinct Jiren. Oh, get the fuck out. <laughs> or, I'm gonna say it, James. I'm gonna say it. Shaggy. Oh, God. <laughs> you're, you're bad, oh, and you goodness. should feel bad. <laughs> so, real talk, that is literally just 21st century Zoomer Chuck Norris memes. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, while I have you here, James. What's up? This is the game that prompted that comparison. Oh god, I'm scared to look. Oh, his blaze blue. All right. 
Beerus, need more Universe 6. I would love for them to go to Universe 6 just to have like a filler arc or something in it, just to actually see it. Hmm. And I, I want Gohan to go to Universe 11 and like just dick around with the Pride Troopers. Mm. <laughs> Since he's all about justice and shit. These combos are all red, by the way. Alright, let's see. Meaning that's all true. Take a whole Universe 6 spinoff series. Is the guy on the right supposed to be Broly? Yeah. They call him Old Spice Body Shots. The fucking combos. What else are you watching lately, chat? What other shows are you watching? Oh my Jesus Christ. Ugh. What the fuck? So... Evan, what that's was that pretty... weird one that you all wanted us to watch? Happy Sugar something or other? Happy Sugar Life is <laughs> legitimately... I can recommend that without a hint of irony. That is an actually excellent... <laughs> okay. I yeah, I, 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 can, I, can, I, I can see that now. Chihayo Furu 3, that's right, that is out now, okay. So, oh, uh, who's ready for story time? All right, Evan. I was, I was roped into, I was roped into watching a show that, um, it's a genre I don't really appreciate, but, like, enough other people in the watch group wanted to start it, and the person, like, that asked me to go in, it says, they, they generally know my tastes, so... We start watching fucking Simpo Gear. It has a lot of thanks Japan moments, and the first couple seasons are decidedly wow, this ain't it, Chief, for various reasons. Just characters acting against their best interests for the inter for the sake of making more drama in the plot, and that drives oh, me up the walls. That yeah, that's I hate that. Um, the series breaking its own rules with Swan Songs being fatal to the user, <laughs> except when they're not, and like. Okay, by the like, eventually you get to the point where like this isn't really a point of tension anymore, where you, you nuke yourself to do horrible things to your opponent because you're gonna survive it if you have plot armor, and like there's no drama with that anymore. But as the series goes on, the overall like, I guess the reason I enjoyed it is that it got me thinking on a meta level about the difference between macro and micro storytelling. Hmm. The overarching story, like the big macro story is genuine trash like this is i don't even know what's going on here there's a, more holes in this than swiss cheese villains just doing things because they need things to happen on the screen but the character interactions later on keep the movie enjoyable the animation quality gets higher and higher and by the fifth season they end up getting a budget like per episode that some series don't get in their entire 24 episode season wow okay this was called what again? Simpo Gear. Okay. Never or heard of that one. um, as I've been calling it with my friends in the other group, Simpo Gay, in that there is very little subtext going on. Oh. Okay. Like, and by season five, we just drop the subtext. I got you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Dark Four has finished watching Cells at Work. He said that was a hilarious anime. Cells at Work was cute and wholesome. Okay. Never heard of most of these. Rainstorm has finished Daughters of Twenty Faces, which I remember he's brought up before. Epithet Erased and Shira Season Four. Where's my dirty? Oh, it's in my party. All right. So, I would very much say I do not recommend Simpo Gear. On the same way, I don't recommend a Zexel to get to the Baryon. <sighs> yeah, I've I know that feel. <laughs> Like, by the end, the spectacle is enough to keep you watching if you're willing to turn your brain off. But getting to that point where they had the budget to just, we don't care if our writing's trash, we're doing so much cool shit on screen that whatever, man, it's fine. It, it takes a while. Hmm, I see. The it first must... two seasons are a slog, although Dr. Veer absolutely dominates any scene he's in. He's an actual Yu-Gi-Oh! villain. Hmm. So this must have worked to some degree if they were still getting 
enough to do more seasons though right or is it just so uh... it's one of those things that they started season one and it was niche but like had enough of a following to get them a budget for season two and it, they kind of their viewer base just kind of snowballed progressively okay along with their budget i see well it sounds like it at least paid off at some point Yeah, it's really hard to convince people, you know, keep watching this or keep reading this. It gets better later. I think that's why I advocate for the strong opening. And I think that's why I have never gone back to Vrains yet. I just have not been able to do it since Evan and I watched that, uh, the, the duel with Revolver or whatever. It's just like, I can't stand the opening of this Godforsaken series, dude. It's just, it's so bad compared to every other Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Yeah, I'm just going to take your word for it. So, to Symphogear's credit, they came out episode one swinging. It was, they were going to then episode two, just off the cliff. We I see. So, yeah. they do the decoy protagonist thing in episode one. Oh, the yeah. person you think is going to be the protagonist dies at the end, and her sidekick ends up being, and so on. Oh, okay. And, it, like, lasting psychological trauma to the survivor, and... You know what? There's like legitimately good things going on here, but there's also a lot of nothing burger until all that is sorted. Oh yeah, okay. Also, I was gonna say um, that, that doesn't seem like a bad premise at all. The other thing that um mildly irks me is you know the show Madoka with Kube the the world that, uh, the cat that tries to get girls to sign contracts. <laughs> they basically what? got what? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, they basically got a voice uh, they've got madoka's voice actress and her role is okay be madoka again but this time you punch things uh, uh, um and this is like this shows in every facet of the show also they apparently ripped off several side plots from other magical girl shows which i i'm taking someone else's word for this nearly like scene for scene in the entire setup but oh dear oh hey joe hey joe don't watch Ga Ray Zero. You should watch My Hero. Decoy protagonist thing is hard to do right. You know what? Don Gun Rampa V3, man. <laughs> that that was That one is gonna be hard to top decoy protagonist. So Shaolin Showdown, I thought, also did it decently. Shaolin Showdown was just excellent. I would agree with that. That was pretty great. <laughs> what a what a fantastic... We were talking about nostalgic games, nostalgic shows. That one lands near the top of the list for me. What a great show. Everything about how that show works and what the characters are doing and how often they're backstabbing each other and how these, these morally gray lines are drawn and shifted over differently in almost every episode. That What a great mechanic. It just worked. Reminder, the best character in Shaolin Showdown is not any of the four heroes. It is Dojo. <laughs> Your opinion is invalid if you think otherwise. <laughs> I might punch the next person that tells me to watch One Piece. Not gonna lie. Um, don't do it, James. Don't go down so, the rabbit hole. <laughs> James. No, my excuse is it's already a thousand. It's like a thousand episodes. It's too late. <laughs> no, no, James. You could start One Piece now, and Team will be collecting his pension when you're done. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Joe says it's still going, please no. So you know how new cartoons really try to force feed comedy for the sake of comedy? Do you yes. do you remember how Shaolin Showdown managed to do this with Dojo, but it worked? Yep. Holy flid. How so, did how did they pull this off? I actually had like a um hang on. I have a clip from Simpho Gear that shows how the animators made it funny, conveyed that a character isn't very smart without saying a word and without being intrusive at all. Like this is just, this is actual God tier characterization. Hmm. Let me uh, get, let me find my MP4 in my stash. <laughs> okay. I won't be able to watch it now, but. It, it's really short, you will. Uh, Evan, copyright. Okay, so. It's funny. It shows the characters a bit of a ditz, and it doesn't say a word. Oh, cool. I didn't have this thing. Sweet. 
Dark Four is recommending the One Piece manga. The animation company became greedy for One Piece. Yeah. I'm gonna post this for chat. Yeah, go ahead. That way chat can kind of see what you're saying. I can't because I'm in the middle of the video, but... Fair enough. Yeah. Have two friends that have watched every episode and has taken like three years overall and binging ten episodes at a time. Jesus, for One Piece, huh? Wow. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I will never do it. Never. The anime up until Fishman Island is aces. All right. I was just told to watch, like, the Battle of Marine Ford or whatever. Hmm, okay. I was told that was good stuff. <laughs> It's like, man, I just, I have zero desire. I, I know I've said for like a couple of years now that my plan is to just binge Vrains and catch up at some point. And now Vrains is over. And I still have had no desire to do it. I just, nowhere near the top of my list. I would almost... Like just, I said, you should watch My Hero. Yeah, I have heard about that. It actually seems interesting. It's so good. So, is there still three seasons of My Hero Academia? We're on season four right now. Season four? Okay, so I've only seen the first three. Seasons one and two were legitimately insane. Yes, they season were. Season three, I feel the pacing, like, that season two did so right, season three just kind of dropped the ball. And yeah, I kind of stopped. There was kind of pacing issues. I feel like it, they had to stretch some stuff out just to get it to the episode, you know, whatever, the episode length that they needed for their season. Let's see no, the this... Lost, lost interest oh, in... This... Oh, tomorrow's episode is going to be so good. Dark 4 lost interest in My Hero. Season 3 killed uh, killed it for him. Joe, also, needs, you know, Joe needs to did, watch Season 3. Did you not see the end of Season 3? Oh, this is kind of easy. Brett hasn't watched an anime to completion since Yu Yu? Dang, man, that's uh, that's some time ago. I mean, to be fair, Yu Yu's pretty hard to beat, so... <laughs> Yu Yu was great. I didn't even see the whole thing, but I remember we watched... We watched a bunch of it during one of Jay's parties. And uh, yeah. I was thoroughly entertained. Like, they even had that that very typical anime tournament arc thing going on. But it was yeah, still... the dark tournament was freaking awesome. But it was still good. Like, I was never bored. <laughs> like, holy flan. Tournament arcs don't have to be a bad thing. Like, hell, Yu-Gi-Oh! is literally built on the premise of this. Yep. Hey, man, Duelist Kingdom's still good after all this time. I, 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 I'm yeah. still partial to Battle City. Battle City is fine. I, I have no problems Battle with it. I love Battle I'm, City. I like the first half of Battle City. I feel the second half drags on a bit. And I mean, before the blimp. Once they get on the blimp, that shit picks up again and it's great. But like, is the that, whole is that after you skip is we skipping the whole entire Noah arc with that? Well, that didn't happen. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Real talk though. It was okay, but why the fuck did they put that in the middle of that? Oh, the, I know, right? The manga had the manga was falling behind. That's actually why that arc exists. Oh. I mean, I thought it was really cool, but like, yeah, it works on some it levels. Need to be there. Other it levels, it's just kind of like, why is this a thing? Oh, why hey, Shay. They just delay season three until they had the conclusion to the Merrick thing, and then have the virtual world arc on the way back from Battle City. Okay, Evan. And I'm thinking I'm thinking of a word. It's a five letter word that starts with M. Uh boosh? <laughs> no, well, if only. Yeah. If only the first two letters are right. Yeah, who knows? It, it, yeah. If shows were more real Ooh, Does it rhyme with honey? Yeah. It right does. with honey, because I think it I think it's might be money. Oh wow. Wow! You did it! Hey, I, I know. tried, man. I'm on like two hours of sleep. I know, Brad. I know I need to watch you to completion. I also wanted to finish uh uh Rerone and Kenshin. That, oh, yeah, oh, that was yeah. one that is one that I regret not finishing. Like, I still listen to Heart of Sword to this day. And like But you what, still listen to Freckles. What a great sh I not as often, but sometimes. Aww. Both great songs. So good. So good. But yeah, the, just, just Vandabar. Just Vandabar. Whatever the, the season three ED is, Dark Four, I don't know what, I don't know what the difference is. 
It's a great ED, actually, as well. I like the video. Let's see, favorite parts of animes are the soundtracks. You do like the plots, but you can't beat good music. I kind of agree, because there's... There are a couple anime that I have... I think I have either the OP or the ED to them, or just some arbitrary soundtrack. But I have never seen the show, ever. I know I have, like... I have a Ghost in the Shell standalone complex song that I listen to a lot, and I have never, ever seen the show. Like, not even one time. Yuki Kaijura? I just want to watch Dot Hack song right now, or is it just me? I kind of want to watch Dot Hack. Dot Hack? I can't yeah, remember. I want to watch Dot Hack. I can't remember if that one pisses off TS or not. There are some of those, uh,. What is that genre called again? I, I don't know. The like the living game world or whatever. There's a word for it, but I can't remember the. Is there? The Japanese name for it. It's like, what's an isek isekai? Is uh, that it? Yeah, isekai. Okay, I can't remember which isekai is TS hates and abs and absolutely adores. I know it's like either Sword Art Online or Dot Hack absolutely pisses him off. I can't remember I which one. I feel like it's more Sword Art. Sword Art Online is actual trash. Yeah. All right. Oh, Isekai's in another I, I, I world. I like the first season. This is just a VR anime. Okay, I see. All right, I got you. Okay. So, if you hear Isekai as a verb team for reference, it's a reference to how a lot of Isekai protagonists have to die horribly at the start of their adventure to go to the other world. Oh, yeah? Okay. So, you may hear someone say that man just got Isekai. But, um... All right. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> Truck coon. <laughs> truck coon. Yeah, oh, someone gets hit by the... someone gets hit by a truck in one of them, right? Okay, yeah. I think I remember hearing about this now. Okay, far be it for me to know which one that is, but oh, not one of them. It's just like oh, a bunch of them. It's a lot. <laughs> truck is a lot of things. Okay, all right. <laughs> Never mind then. Now it's funny. I see. <laughs> It's a running gag. Okay, then. Second season was garbage. Which one, Joe? The Sword Art Online? Yeah, I didn't really like the whole Alfheim shit. Sword Art the Online, flying, okay. The, the flying stuff was cool, but the whole, yeah. Rainstorm's yeah. been listening to Kara no Kyokai's soundtrack since he started watching the films last year. He's seen all the films twice. Good man. The, uh, yeah, good man. I guess it's not even nine o'clock and it feels like it's one. No, oh, yeah. Oh, man. I don't know when I'm going to fall over. I've gotten no sleep two days this week, so. It's okay. We can just pay oh, to you until you're either happy or really adorable. upset. That's right, the Evan. That's right. Yeah, I still think No Mercy is a garbage heist, but yeah. So it's very clearly in intended for you to play along with a pseudo stealth thing at the start. Yeah, I just hate that it's it gives you the options, but then it's basically like, but you're an idiot for trying to do it your way. I I don't I'm not a fan of that type of game design. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's hard to get it right for every conceivable path. But it's just that path seems objectively worse and intentionally worse. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Yeah, maybe Team UDF needs to get his anime on here at some point again. I, I'm just not watching anything. Yeah, we're doing payday tonight, do, Brett. Do you even have time to watch anything? Uh, I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> the feels Just start of it. that one piece. Start the one piece. Oh, screw off. <laughs> I feel like that was also a very significant contributor into last night. Sure, I. It's fair. Yeah. I'm just happy I got a more offensive build. Like I, 
I didn't, I, like I said, I don't hate the crossbow build, but I just feel like I'm not killing as many things as I need to be killing. Or at the very least, with the judge having the explosives to push off the shields and knock off dozer helmets, it just feels way more useful. So, I don't know if you saw the post I made in, um, UDF Cord. The, there is a sidearm shotgun, let me pull it back up, I forget what, what its name was. The Grim Shotgun with Dragon Breath Rounds is the best secondary in the game by far. Okay. Um, you can put it on literally any build and have an excellent time. Okay. I might, I I'll, I might look into it tonight then because I don't hate the judge. I love the judge actually, but yeah, if it's something that can, we can make more use out of, I might as well. The thing is, it handles crowd. Con it does base. It kills basically everything that isn't dozer shaped. Hmm. And my recommendation in your Discord was, if you have no idea where to even start for a build, get the shotgun with incense and get a primary you feel comfortable fighting dozers with, and there's your starting. Okay, all right. Brett's gonna rewatch you, you. Fantastic. Rainstorm doesn't have a lot in his ratings list, but he's seen a few gems that don't think most people here have seen. Also some hot garbage. You know what's one that I always wanted to check out? Oh, God, I ha it's another one of those where I have the song, but I don't, I never watched the show. Let me see if I can find it. It's supposed to, I think it's supposed to come off as cutesy, but it's actually horror of some kind. I don't actually know what it's supposed to be about, though. I love those. Hira... God, what was it? Hira... Hira Gushi? Is that the name of it? Let me look this up. Let me Google. Hira Gushi no Nakukoro ni. Or is, that, or is that the song name? I don't actually know the name of the anime now. That might be the song name. I don't know. That was one that I was told to watch ages ago. And by ages ago, I mean I was actively writing Destiny's Horizon. <laughs> That's how, how long ago. Huh? That's, that's how long it's been. That was one I always wanted to check out. It seemed very screwy. I like the deceptive horror shows. Like, I'm not going to lie. That's a... I can get into it. Yeah, psychological drama, whatever it is. Yeah, I can get into that setup. Something comes off a lot more innocent than it really is. I do enjoy that kind of crap. Mostly because I guess I kind of rate that kind of crap, but whatever. Heard the new one was good? Okay. Oh, There's a new one? Wow. Okay. Oh. But I know what Soul Eater is. I have not seen Soul Eater, but I know what it is. Oh, it's really good. It did look interesting. I had to rewatch that because I I caught, saw like the first half and then I was out on weekends and I couldn't really see the last of the okay. other half. There was an interesting mix up of one of the Soul Eater OPs and it, it mixed it with Yu-Gi-Oh! One of those fan made things. I remember that from ages ago. That was also the Destiny to Horizon era. <laughs> Man, where the heck did all this time go? Okay, Rainstorm's referring to a new horror anime. Okay. In the Promised Neverland. Oh, eh. You get attached to characters, Dark Four? Hey, man, I know that feel. I think, like, more than half the time I picked a favorite character in Don Gun Rampa. Don Gun Rampa was like, all right, time to kill this character. <laughs> yeah, those are always painful. But, man, I'm, I'm just addicted to that genre now, man. I, just, I need more of that. It's so good. Promised Neverland is... I have very mixed feelings on it. It kind of blows its load, so to speak. Alright. Giggity. Like, the whole reveal and the, the weight of the twist is dumped on you very early. And then it doesn't really do a lot with that tension for quite some time. Oh, okay. It, it's one of those... It's just slow all around. So, apparently the manga, like, gets really, really good, but this only covers the first arc. So, <laughs> the anime only covers the first arc. Okay. Let's see, Gruntman would like to announce that he was once testing if a clock was working with his partner. 
Instead of going through a resistor, the partner shorted out the entire circuit. Then, then the thing exploded. All right, there you go. This has been a moment with Gruntman. I Did have off some eyebrows at least, or what? I have not seen One Punch Man. What? It's really all right. I recommend it. Uh, season one's fantastic. So, people read about season two. It's still fine, honestly. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I have to go back and watch the episodes I've missed over the last month and a half. But I thought, yeah, I thought it was still great. I didn't really see what anyone's gripe or what everyone's gripe is about it. So production quality is noticeably lower. Yeah. Budget but, went down, not up, but it's still, it still was still very. Still very. Yeah, I still thought it was great. It also I mean, doesn't end as climactically as season one, but for the story it was telling, it was still fine. Yeah, I mean, the last episode I saw was after that, uh, the, in the turn of the martial arts thing. When, um, they the monsters retreated, that was the last episode I saw, but I thought it was fine. I thought that was a really interesting take on the tournament art arc, where, like, the protagonist isn't actually trying his hardest to win. And I don't he's know. That's an interesting the, subversion. He's just trying to see what the deal is about martial arts, and it's like oh. he's observing the wildlife, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, dang it, Brett! Can't be mean to the grunt man. Oh, we got purple. He just gets <sighs> a little. T he dives a little too deep into the memes. Let's see, Kate says, a few of her high school friends were really into anime. One of them tried to get her into it with a manga about some girl who wanted to be a prince. Was not for her. That put you off anime for even longer. That's fine, Kate. That's, that's understandable. Anime has some of the most ridiculous premises sometimes. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm pretty sure there exists an anime where three, like, Yakuza goons can choose between dying or changing their gender and becoming, like, J-pop sensations. I'm pretty sure this is an actual show. I guess we'll see if anyone in chat thinks they've heard of this idea. Rainstorm doesn't even know what that is. All right, huh? I remember reading about it somewhere. Oh, Gina remembers me. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I guess I brought it up before, haven't I? Arkea was away. What's this about an idea? Oh, I was trying to recall the name of the anime where Yakuza... Yakuza are basically given the choice between dying or becoming J-pop sensations and they have to change their gender or something. Twitch is buffering. Dude, Twitch has been, like, actual garbage this whole week. I don't know what the flit's going on. All week. More so than usual, Evan. Okay, fair enough. Relative garbage. <laughs> I can't watch like any of GDQ, and I've and I've I lowered just watched it. Big Bad X Tournament run earlier. It was fucking awesome. Good. So Glad you enjoyed it. I can't, I can't I watch any of GDQ, most. but that's also a me issue. I don't want to click on GDQ. <laughs> I kind of, I'm 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 really torn on the fence. I'm I'm really on the fence about GDQ these days. Some of their presentation stuff is way too tryhardy in in certain directions, and it's like they don't need to push this. They don't need to push certain things as hard as they do. You can just be normal about it. You can just be understanding about it, and that's the end of the story. You know, like, uh, who wants to be normal just, anymore? Just let just let people be people. But they they kind of go out of their way, and there's always that question about where does the money actually go. That one is the one that kind of gets me, but it. But certain games are quite entertaining. I do have to admit, the awful block is almost always great, ironically. And there's a couple great games on there that I do like watching. There was a great, there was a great joke the runner last night for Bioshock did, 
where he he had this fake blue screen come on the screen and then it pretends to reboot the computer into the Skyrim opening and it was just it was fantastic. <laughs> that sounds pretty great actually. <laughs> All right. Dark Four might have found it. Let's see. If this uh, Japan and Canada site wants to load. Backstreet Girls, Goku Dolls, anime featuring three Yakuza getting gender reassignment surgeries to become J-pop idols. This is probably the one. <laughs> this is probably the one. That's pretty much the exact description. Saw they were streaming Bioshock last night. I still absolutely just... Bioshock murdered me, dude. I hate... I can't do it. The end of the game was just so bad. I don't even want to see the rest of the series after that. Two was um not good. Bioshock Infinite was okay, I hear, but I was what the end of the series did for you. Two did to me, so fair enough. All right. Fair enough. Dark Force and says I, Infinite's well, trippy. I will say you didn't miss anything in Bioshock One. You got you saw the interesting bits, and the final boss is lame. Is okay. Yeah, it looked. What was going on here? You're jamming drugs into some thing. Like, what the flit is this fight? This looks so bad. And then a bunch of the the little girls just come stab them repeatedly with more needles. Like, I, <sighs> sounds a little violent. They they had an idea, I guess. <laughs> they had an idea. Who the flid knows where it was supposed to be going? Oh, that's okay, Brett. Spoilers. It's garbage. No, I'm kidding. All right, I'm kidding. I mean, it could be. Probably is. Wait, wait uh, it, Bioshock? Is that what he's starting his run of? Yeah, he's gonna do. I guess he's gonna do the series. Nice. Violet Evergarden. Um. I saw the first few episodes of it. It was, it was all right. What's it about? Um, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Not anything most of us would be interested in, but Rainstorm mostly enjoyed it, save for one problematic episode. Joe seems to like it. Dark Four has apparently binged it several times, it looks like. I, man, all these that I'm, I've just never heard of. I guess I just don't go looking around for things to watch anymore. I don't know. Love a good female lead? That's fair. It's about a girl who's basically a weapon. But after the war... She works to become a typist. What? <laughs> what the heck? It's about a child. Oh, move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. It's about a child soldier who loses her arms and learns to be human by writing letters for people in a post World War One like world. That I... sounds cool. It sounds really cruel, That's... actually. It sounds weird. I see, though, huh? You basically write letters by interpreting people's feelings, huh? It sounds like it's meant to be slice of life, but within that universe, like not any kind of slice of life you would see from real life, but within the confines of the story, it's a slice of life. I don't know if that's true, but just based on the descriptions you're giving me, maybe that's what it sounds like. Kind of? Alright. Okay. There must be more going on at some point then. Ultra Beast better never come back. Man. <laughs> better come back. I love Ultra Beast. Their designs were so good. Oh, you did say better come back. I read that wrong for some reason. Okay. 
Is, so, was, was, it, was the Ultra Beast the thing that I was... We were looking at the list for things that got cut from Sword and Shield, and I saw, like, a, a freaking box or something was a Pokemon. There was yes. a lot that yeah, got cut yeah. from Sword and Shield. Okay. Yeah, Ultra Beasts are very non-conventional designs for them. They're not based on animals when any stretch because they're from a different dimension. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. Like, Naga Nadel is a fucking wasp with, like, a syringe for a tail. It's amazing. <laughs> It, it's, but like, they're so cool. They, they yeah. look so great. Plus, the Ultra Ball looks pretty dope. Hey, don't badmouth the ice cream cone. The ice cream. I'm cone just saying, right. it looks dope. I'm just saying. No, I like I'm Dark Four. Oh, get out, of Dark Four. <laughs> James just bandwagons on that. <laughs> no, I I liked the Ultra Beast from Sun. I have to admit that one kind of. That one kind of took me off guard. I'm like, I'm looking around at all these things, and I just, I see like a box or a treasure chest or something, and I'm like, Evan, what is this? So, his design is cool. Like, it's apparently based on like some Buddhist thing. Like, okay, so the box itself has all the bricks flip around, and they have like eyes in and out. I, I, there's some symbolism with this. I don't know what exactly it is, but they were trying to do something clever here. I hate and the nice the brainstorm. I freaking hate that thing. In hmm. terms of being an ultra beast, it's no weirder than the fucking exploding head. The exploding what? Exploding head clown. Exploding head clown. Well, let me get plus that one for you. Yeah, please do. This this sounds like something I have not seen. I need it to be freaking false so I can get Galarian at those Arden Kuno and Moltres. Oh man, Gina showed me those last night and they look pretty cool actually. Oh, they look so dope. Yeah, I'm interested. Okay, so you think I'm kidding when I say exploding head clown, but I almost don't, but I'm in, I'm intrigued enough. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> this is a Pokemon, huh? All right. <laughs> Buzzwell is based on gains. <laughs> Does that make it Buzzswole, Evan? That is... Okay, so the area you fight him in, in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, the trees themselves are flexing. What? Uh, 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 are they freaking Ents from on. fucking Lord of the Rings? Even the trees walked in those films, man. Let me, let me find it. Don't worry, Rainstorm. I still haven't played one since Gold or Silver. I typically don't tend to know what's going on here. I mean, Gold and Silver still pretty fucking great. Darn okay, straight. Look at that. I want to play. Look heart, at this. I want to play Heart Gold and Soul Silver at some point. Look I was so glad I found Soul Silver for forty when I did. Who? Look at the fucking trees in this area! <laughs> yeah, timestamp. Just start. It's not long, but... Okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the trees themselves are flexing! Okay, well... Alright. <laughs> Ultra jungle. You were right- what? Hold on, what did that say? You arrived at a war pole that was 1265 light years away from where you were. Okay, all right. I see we yeah. just we just started doing all right. Okay. Yeah, um Ultra Space has a mini game in Ultra Sun and Moon where you go to magical places that are very very far from by riding either a Solgaleo or Lunala. Uh-huh. All right. Well, I guess it is a fantasy series. And that's what you see at the very start of the video, the end of the minigame. Oh, okay. Buzzwool is actually really good. Yeah, he is. How'd the Sword and Shield legendaries turn out? I don't hear a lot of talk about them. Okay, so Zassian, the sword one, is on par with Mega Rayquaza in terms of sheer destructive power. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty good. Zassian is pretty good. Okay. Zamazenta, 
Zamazenta is obscenely powerful, but nowhere near the level of Jesus Christ this warps. It is hypothetical uber tier with all the legendaries. Um, plus sword and shield. Zacian might actually get kicked upstairs with Mega Ray. Hmm. Alright. But they can't stand up to God Beast Farfetched. Sir Fetch is awesome. <laughs> Eternatus is the weakest of the three, but has the best design, and that fucks me up because I want him to be good so badly. Eternatus is really. I just like Dynamax Cannon. The whole Dynamax thing was interesting. I guess I don't know why they got rid of Megas in favor of this. I don't know how long. I still. I didn't like Z moves. I I would have preferred they just stuck with Mega Evolutions. Hmm. Megas were great. Megas, I you know what? I wasn't the biggest on Z moves. I didn't like them. But I, I can appreciate what they added. I could appreciate what they added to the game because there was opportunity cost in taking them. You, you gave up your item. Same deal with Megas. Also, the um, Megas were heavily telegraphed in that you like knew there was only one Mega per team and only a handful of Mons could do it viably based on any given team setup. It, great, cool. Dynamax has zero opportunity cost. You can use your held item when you're doing it, which should already set off alarm bells. Yeah. You effectively throw out a Z-move every turn when you're design Dynamax and have double health. Yep. Also, the Z-moves you throw out, um, they have additional effects. For example, the fighting one and the poison one and the air one boost your stats to sweep while you're huge and throwing out Z moves every turn. And basically, at the start of Sword and Shield's meta, the competitive players basically said, this is garbage. We're going to try this for a month and see how this goes, but if people aren't going to like this. Less than a month later, there were votes to ban it in basically every format. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Like, team, this, is, this has got to the point where, like, I can throw out Excadrill as my lead. Mega. Excadrill's Max amazing. Rockfall. Max Rockfall. Now we have a Sandstorm. Excadrill's speed is doubled now because of his ability. He can still use his item while Dynamaxed, remember. And, like, the Max Steel Spike or whatever that is. Uh, boost defense, so he's basically really hard to revenge kill. And just run through your entire team 6-0 with your starter. Hmm. Like, this is not okay. You So, as a general rule of thumb, you can get an idea of how healthy a Pokemon format is by how much, or inversely proportionate to how much you see top ladder players playing Choice Scarf and Poster Ditto. <laughs> Ditto was one of the top four Pokemon used in Sword and Shield meta. That's For awesome. reference, the last time we had a meta this unhealthy was Black and White 1 OU, where Ditto, Ditto was top 20. I see. If you're seeing a lot of Ditto, it's a shit format. Okay. Well, no, let me rephrase. If you're seeing a lot of Ditto at high-level play, it's a shit format. There's going to be memers, of course, that just throw Dittos on because XD, Revenge Killer. Hmm. But <laughs> it's not consistent, and there's, like... You could be playing something that actually does something for your team instead of that, instead of just having five mons and a gimmick. But um, when that uh, that potential gimmick is more powerful than any six mon, you know you're gonna have a, you've got a problem. That does sound degenerate. Or you could play six gimmicks. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib brainstorm. Dynamax felt dumbed and didn't get the game. It's a weird concept, but I guess Takes I don't. Takes up too hate much it. time to actually go through, too. Well, the animation seems a little the long. Yeah, yeah, the animation is way too long. So, Shuckle. I don't hate it in the in-game sense. It creates for interesting boss fights until your water lizard just blows them the fuck out by finger gunning them. And uh, okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> but I have um, a flying lizard. Thank you very much. It's one of those things that, like, this was clearly designed with single player in mind. 
in a series that has been designed with multiplayer either battling or trading traditionally yeah. and this clash of design idea ideas very much comes to the forefront in this i mean i could appreciate them doing something different but at the same time like come on guys yeah i wanted i gave it a chance i legitimately like okay blow me away give me my I, ultimate I'm pokemon game where i can have everything every region mm -hmm. every freaking thing and yeah let's call it a day But then That's you won't, the you won't give them any more money after that, James. Probably not. Because so <laughs> I'll have if, every gen in one game. If the DLC, at, like what they announced for the free patch for the deal, when the DLC hits, like so separate from the paid update, basically the entire decks will be in the code or a lot more of the decks will be in the code. Depending on what all makes it back in, if it's everything, I might get the game when it goes on sale. But, they're going to be adding a lot of legendaries in. But... Yeah, a lot of legendaries. We've seen Volcarona, we've seen Garchomp, which are two ah, mons Garchomp. I get weak knees for. Garchomp is my boy. Garchomp, best dragon. Just saying. Hmm. Yeah, DLC is a lot better than forcing you to buy a new version, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. <laughs> Evan's going all in. It's going all in. That's right, Shay. That's right. Oh, shucks. They're still not keeping your mind. <laughs> Yep, there you go. Get Sword or Shield used, then get the DLC. Yeah, that's, that's precisely it. I want to reward them for the DLC, not the game itself. Oh, the DLC was announced, what, like yesterday or the day before? Probably still some, you know, details to be hashed out. Brad, you want in on this Lucario? Yeah. I'm just going to say it over the chat instead of type into him. <laughs> Lazy James. He does want yeah. in, though. Dark oh, yeah, Ford. Depends. Dark Ford. The DLC, the Pokemon themselves being added to the game that you can get through trade are going to be with the free, the free pack. If you want to catch them naturally in the wild, you have to get the DLC. But ostensibly through home or bank or whatever the fuck the service is called now, you'll be able to just import what you want. Destroy. The DLC could also extend the game's lifespan drastically. Yep, giving them a lot more time to work on their next game. Yeah. They've said this DLC is in lieu of a third version, like Platinum or whatever, hmm, in okay. the in the announcement, so. What would you even do? Like, what would the third one be? It's Sword and Shield. What goes with that? Gun. Gun? <laughs> <laughs> As in, we're being held at gunpoint to develop this game. Please help. <laughs> I throw Charizard in there. Sword, okay. shield, and greaves. Oh shit, I forgot to tell. Forgot to tell him I started. I thought it would pop up on his game. Okay, thank god. Spear. God dang it. Magic. I hate how long the lag is when you start up a raid before your friends actually see it. <laughs> Pokemon Moosh. How is the Moosh, Evan? Moosh is okay. okay. The Moosh is hauling ass to try and finish his thing. Oh, he wasn't uh, done yet? No. Oh, okay. who, who spread that information? <laughs> Alright, that's fair enough. How this much, is shiny. I'm gonna flip balls. How much more does he have? One boss. Ooh. Oh, no. Moosh oh, not. no. Well, no, he's not Gigasburg. He just has zero desire to make oh, it. Oh, that's sad. Oh, okay. Motivation is at rock bottom. Alright, okay. But still, Moosh Boss, end of Queast. Oh, Evan. 
Evan. Wow. I got Shiny Lucario in a raid last night. Oh, good. I was freaking out. I'm like, holy shit. Because this is my first shiny I ever got in a Pokemon game. <laughs> really? Huh. Yeah, I've never... Oh, I'm not counting Pokemon Go because I get shinies left and right on that game, but still. That's fair. Okay. Uh, Brett wants to know, Evan, if you're interested in something called Temtem. What's Temtem? It's Pokemon for Steam. Uh-huh. Coming out oh, the 21st. Was that that funded game? Because I've seen stuff with that. Uh, Looks pretty good. It's El Google time. Temtem. Tem. Looks like it's one word. Okay. Temtem is a massively multiplayer creature collection adventure inspired by Pokemon. Seek adventure in the lovely airborne archipelago along with your Temtem squad. Catch every Temtem, battle other tamers, customize your house... Join a friend's adventure or explore the dynamic online world. Huh. Huh. Right. Let's see the system specs. Yeah, this is fine. It's got house customization. Well, it's got a stress test that you can do, too. Pick and ban Man. for competitive, huh? Pick and ban for competitive, huh? Age of Empires 2. The heck, Rainstorm. You should have said that, like, right out of the gate. And I guess you still play it, though, so I guess it can't really be that nostalgic, huh? So, I usually, like, raise my eyebrows when I hear pick-ban systems. Usually just because it means we don't want half to balance our game. Just ban it, Lamau, if you don't like it. And that's often what it turns into. But... Also, bless these people for doing a stress test prior to actual release. Yeah. I wish more games actually did this. Yeah, I don't see that often on Steam at all. Halo's doing it now. Well, Halo is... Eh. Isn't it a little late? <laughs> I just want, like two or three to come out so we can play that yeah that would be nice i like some of the maps on reach but it's it's grading I, on me uh, very quickly in matchmaking <laughs> yeah reach was the game where i just went you know what i think i'm good uh this is that's enough halo for me. i yeah. mean don't get me wrong but the story was awesome in it but like oh absolutely yeah I 100% regret getting four, dude. <laughs> hey, four had really good music. <laughs> All right, great. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> Gotta dig it. So, wait, they made a sequel to Halo 3? Yeah. Halo 3 ODS, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know, man. I couldn't get into four story at all. It just it didn't feel like a Halo story to me. But I don't know. I I can think of much worse stories than Halo Four story, but it's just when I'm playing it, I just I don't know. It didn't feel like Halo to me. So did you? You didn't do five story, did you? Did you do that? No, I don't have an X bone. Oh, uh, well, you know what we're going to have to do when you get no. that? No. <laughs> we got to do the legendary run, dude. God got dang to. it. All right. I mean, I did it with Corey and his buddies, like, really long time ago, but still, like, yeah. Let's see. I'm still waiting for Maybe Jay. For. Jay and I are going to go assault on the control room for, like, five hours murdering each other, and YouTube can get a kick out of that, maybe. We 
ran we ran legendary on that um what the heck was it that anniversary remake or whatever what was that thing we did james we did a halo one run at some point yeah it was the anniversary i believe that's what it was anniversary okay yeah good I, times that is posted on youtube actually okay that's good times we legendary that right oh yeah Ooh. of course we did it's the only way to do that <laughs> Well, actually, the ancient aliens were gods and planned everything, Twist. Yeah, yeah. See, I think that's my one problem with something like Chrono Cross. Like, the world is... The world is amazing. There's a bunch of characters. It's all built and everything, but... Everything kind of feels demeaned when it's like, Yeah, but Shala had all of this planned out 10,000 years ago. Like, screw off, dude. <laughs> Just let me have my... Let me have my freaking story. Like, the only thing I get out of that, then, is that Shala's an idiot because she still got captured by the Time Devourer or whatever the flip that was. And had, where the hell was Janice during this entire time, huh? Yeah, where was you had, he? You had this plan 10,000 years ago. You would think you had a plan to not get captured in this stupid Time Devourer. Jesus. All right, I'm, right. I'm not, I'm not going to rant about this, though. So... I, f I totally forget because Scotty was the one that played it. I didn't really play it, but why the hell wasn't Chrono or any of them there? God, that one I actually don't remember. They show up at the very end, but it's not like it's not I know they're in a really them. But that's it. Yeah, like, that was. They're all at that I saw. they're at the very end to give you like a massive info dump, and that's about it. And I think one of the characters knew Luca. That's just weird. I still need to rewatch Chrono Cross because boy, I think you need to finally beat Chrono Trigger all fifteen times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing all the endings; that could screw right off. Hey, most of them aren't that bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only a one that's, selectively the only one that's lethargic really bad. person, James. The only one that's really bad is the one where you gotta beat Lavos with just Chrono and Meryl, oh. and, then Meryl and that's it. <laughs> that's the only one that sucked. <laughs> Well, then that final kick everything you're good yeah we're gonna, need some, we're gonna need some new game plus for this i love that tech so much ah good times i kind of want to play now so i realized what it is payday on one down gives oh, the over here. exact same itch that halo on legendary does from yeah yeah, I can see that. Some of the heists are a little over the top, though. <laughs> By which I mean re. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Wasn't the big twist that the Forerunners basically programmed all of human history so they would make Master Chief's armor, ba meaning basically there was no point to Halos 1 through 3, ODST, and Reach. God, is that really what happened, dude? My headset picked a great time to fucking reset. <laughs> oh, rip. Halo 4 suffers the explaining things that don't need explaining problem that games and shows go on too long. Time. Yeah, I can see that. The hell is this? Okay, let's see. They planned it so humanity would reach Master Chief's level of evolution. I see. Okay. The hell is this? The Covenant was an accident in lore. I don't actually think I ever knew that. That's hilarious. Or did I know that? I don't know, man. I don't remember a lot of Halo's, like, deep lore now. I just kind of remember the first three games. I just loaded up and just shot shit. <laughs> I mean, that was more or less the purpose of the game. <laughs> Halo 4 and 5 deep lore kind of sucks. Dude, I am so, like, I don't even want to look at Halo 5's lore. Just, Dude, just, all you have to do is play it, that's all. <laughs> like, from what TS has told me about this, I just do not feel like I even want to bother ruining <laughs> Halo anymore with this story. No, just play the multiplayer, dude. And who cares about the story? Just play yes. Halo 5 multiplayer. Yes. Okay. Reminder that the prophets are bad people. 
And the Coveys wouldn't even be hostile to humans if they weren't spewing garbage. <laughs> yeah, true. Prophets are kind of douchebags. Prophet species began worshipping the Forerunners because when they got put back on their planet after the Halo Ring event, there was a bunch of Forerunner tech on the planet. Huh. Arrow. Hey, I was trying to remember this at some point, but someone remind me. The Halo rings at some point in history were fired, right? I don't remember. Okay. Yes. I just remember wanting to see them get fired. Okay. Yes, they were they were fired, and that's why Flood were all but wiped out. Okay. Initially. Because I, I couldn't remember. I remembered the, the idea was let's just kill all the food, but I couldn't remember if it was actually successfully carried out at any point in history. Yeah, I, I, I honestly do remember. All right, okay. Regrets a moron. Boy, is that an understatement. <laughs> Truer words have never been said. <laughs> Found the Ark, going to jump there immediately without scouting. <laughs> Than just being utterly blindsided by the fact that it's the human home world. <laughs> oh, what a quinky dink. I still think one of my favorite story moments in like the first trilogy is when you're just busy fighting the covenant for control over that area that has to do with the Ark, right? It's like it, it opens the warp or whatever. And then just freaking Gravemind and the Flood crash into the planet and everything gets super dark, green, and dreary. It's like atmospherically one of my favorite parts of the series. Mm -hmm. Just everything gets screwed level. up. hate that level. The level is... it's rough, yeah. <laughs> they, they wanted to make something harder than the library, and they did. <laughs> yeah, it's called Cortana. No, okay. Let no no stop. Cortana, you shut your whore mouth. Could you imagine stop. never replaying that level? I can imagine never yes. replaying that level. Yes. <laughs> you imagine solo legendarying that level? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can, Evan. <laughs> Evan, you're about to get fed to some fucking fishes. <laughs> unfortunately, I can, and I never want to do it again. Do that, huh? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, because Jay, James, and them had already, like, they'd already no-lifed the campaign to heckin' back. And so by, by the time I got to it, I was just like, well, screw it. I guess I'll just do it by myself. And Jesus, that level. You brought so, it upon yourself. That was a day of <laughs> suffering. I think the only thing that makes it better is it gets easier as you go. The first few rooms are the hardest. Oh. <laughs> but... And once you get, like the Cortana sequence it's mostly downhill from there but yeah save for the there is just save pain. for the the random hail or the random flood combat units turning the corner with a rocket launcher and oh hey how's it going <laughs> <laughs> do you ever like right as the rocket guy sees you you throw a grenade at the ground to grenade jump out of the way of the <laughs> rocket because it was lose your shield or lose your life. No, I always went. To, I always went to go for the melee because there's a chance it would explode in his face too and kill him. <laughs> if I go down, I'm taking you with me. That was my mentality. Yes. <laughs> like I hear the foosh of a rocket. I don't know where it's coming from. All right, grenade at the floor. Up we go. <laughs> All right, everybody, what's your favorite Warthog sequence? Oh, man. Halo end of Halo 3. Like, is that even a question? Could be. Who knows? I still like the end of Two. Halo first Get one. out of here, Brett. <laughs> Two. Just saying, you can't beat Escaping from the Pillar of Autumn. I'm just saying. Hmm. That's Although fair. I did... I, I did really like the one at the ending of 3 too, though. That was also good. ODST had a... 
See, I think I was too busy being angry at ODSTs. Kate and I got annihilated when we were doing ODSTs. I think I told this story recently on the channel. There was this one part on the bridge where we just would spawn in, we would get shot, we would have to spawn in again, we would get shot, we would spawn in again. <laughs> it was just, god dang. This one segment was absolutely horrific. Yeah, we got stuck on a checkpoint on the bridge. Oh, I remember one time I was doing it with one of my other buddies, I ended up freaking... We had a checkpoint right as the platform fell. So oh. as oh. so as we, we all wiped, I was loading into a platform that was falling every time. <laughs> I'm just like, well, and then eventually the the game, for uh, somehow it messed up and went to the checkpoint before that one and reset it after like 30 wipes <laughs> or I something. So I'm like, okay. I think those were in the game as a type of fail safe in case you got too stuck. It just it saves one previous checkpoint in its memory. Yeah. Maybe it did more, I don't remember. But I remember that was a trick we would use sometimes when we were like, all right, this checkpoint's not working. Let's just die repeatedly really fast and the game will take pity on us and send us back to, to simpler times. Reach doesn't have any runs, okay. I think Delta Halo from 2 is still one of my favorite levels aesthetically, though. Those, like, Aztec-like ruins are kind of interesting to me. Those are pretty dope. You that... know what aesthetic I will never get tired of? I'm trying to... All the same halls of the library. <sighs> all right. Shut up, Evan. <laughs> trying to determine whether you were about to meme or not. Yeah, okay, all right. God. Fucking Bisharp. Bisharp is wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm trying to go for a G Max Machamp raid. I'm not going for Bisharp. <laughs> That's why Rage is awful, dang. Oh, let me get that that thing that you sent me, Evan. The Reach, yeah. the Reach meme. <laughs> I Did you save it or? Oh, uh, I can scroll up and find it. We haven't had too much of a chat lately. There it is. All right. Hang on, everybody. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> the be the best part is at the bottom. Yeah, I know. I, I had to scroll out. No stupid caves. No stupid caves. Floor suggestion already cooked. <laughs> uh, Were there just a bunch of those that you got from a thread or something? Because you had the other one too. I have a decent amount of them, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'm not too surprised. Alright, anyone else got anything they want to talk about tonight? Because otherwise, I think it's almost time to boot up the Dolan. <sighs> Man, two years of NSD, everybody. Could you imagine running a show that you've wanted to cancel for a year and a half or about two years? Yes. Oh, you're a person. Person. I think it's just a uh, I think it's just a running gimmick at this point. <laughs> What's the description on the wiki actually? Team wants to cancel the show so he can play more Ocarina at Time Rando. I guess that's still kind of outdated, but it's still good. Brainstorm used to have I think it was Slay the Spire there or something. That's that's gone through a couple iterations. Alright. I feel like something like NSD works best when it's just on impulse rather than being a forced scheduled thing. It is. We were talking about that before you got here that because we were trying to think if this was going to be the episode that I upload to YouTube to let them know what the show is all about 
and how we just basically screw around and talk about random things here. It really does work best if we don't plan the topics ahead of time. I think, oh, it's a Gallade. Okay, yeah. shit. I think knowing that you and James were both coming in here, I did want to get the nostalgic game discussion out of the way, but that was about it. Mm. Yeah. All right, but yeah, that's about the gist of it, YouTube. We do this every Friday. Sometimes Team UDF is a little more tired on some Fridays than others, but uh, eh, whatever. We usually have a good time here. It's been on Fridays for a long time now, and I think on one occasion we did it on a Saturday or something. Like Mario Party, I think, came out. So we skipped a day or whatever. But yeah, I think that'll do it for this edition of Non-Stop Discussion. So, uh, well, that's it, that's it, YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.